Welcome to Spew, Spectrum People Enjoying Wizardry. I'm Quirinus, and I have Asperger's Syndrome. I'm Lavender, and my daughter, Abby Cadabby, has nonverbal autism. And I now call this 19th meeting of Spew to Order. Lavender. Hello, Queerness. How are you today? Um, I'm alright. I'm in a I'm in a better mood now. Like in this moment, I am good. You've had a kind of a rough week, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a rough week over here. We've had a death in the family and we uh we just got back from the funeral yesterday and it was it's just been kind of somber. My bank got hacked and my job finally got affected by COVID a little bit, and our hours got cut, so it's just kind of been stressful. But in this moment, I am okay, and I'm glad to be up and recording with you. (laughs) How's Abby been dealing with the lockdown? It's had its ups and downs, definitely, but the past, past week and a half has been pretty good. We've, we've started her on a new, just a multivitamin is all it is. It's nothing special, but it's just, I don't know, a kind of advanced multivitamin where it's easier for the body to absorb is the only thing that's kind of different about it. And she seems to be taking to it really well. And I'm glad because she's she is a very picky eater, so I'm glad to be able to get some kind of nutrition into her. But she's been she's been all right. She's handled lockdown a lot better than I thought she would. We tried to Zoom with her teacher. <laughs> we tried to Zoom with her teacher last week, and I, I had it. I had the Zoom pulled up on the laptop, and as soon as, as soon as Abby saw her teacher's face, she tried to shut the laptop. <laughs> she said hi to her, though, but she tried to shut the laptop. She was afraid she was going to make her do some <laughs> schoolwork or something. It was funny. <laughs> My week has been not super eventful. I've been working on a couple projects. That's about it. We do have quite a bit of important dates, though, this month. Quite a bit, yes. A lot of them related to the Battle of Hogwarts, which took place on May 2nd. But we do have a lot of birthdays. Mm-hmm. On the first is Griphook's birthday, apparently. The second is Victoire Weasley's. They... they, they why they named these kids so dumb? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the fifth is Jesse Cave's birthday. She played Lavender Brown. The seventh is Robbie Jarvis's birthday. He played young James Potter. The eleventh is Pam Ferris's birthday. She played Aunt Marge. The twelfth got two birthdays. Uh, Luke Youngblood, who played Lee Jordan, and... Dom Hall Gleason, who played Bill Weasley. The 13th, Zoe Wanamaker, who played Madame Hooch. And Robert Pattinson, who, of course, played Cedric Diggory. And Samantha Morton, who plays Mary Lou Barebone. And also on the 13th is Abby Cadabby's birthday. Yep. She's just now turning 10. I feel like she's been 10 for, like, a year. (laughs) No, she's just been a very tall (laughs) nine-year-old. Nope, she'll be 10, right? What year is it? <laughs> Jumanji reference. Oh, was she born in, in, in a 10 year? That makes it so much easier to do math. Yes, it does. She was born in 2010. Deaths related to the Battle of Hogwarts. We have Crab, Fred, Lupin, Tonks, Colin, Lavender, Snape, Bellatrix, Nagini, and Tom Marvolo Riddle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not related to the Battle of Hogwarts. May 18th in 1292, Ignotus Peveril. He was the one with the invisibility cloak. May 24th, 1995, Barty Crouch Sr. I don't, this one was just a fun one. May 29th is when the Basilisk died in 1993. And May 30th, 1927, Antonio. Probably... The saddest death of a character that we only knew for 10 minutes. Antonio was the baby chupacabra from the very beginning of Crimes of Grindelwald. 
that he threw out of the flying carriage. <laughs> I didn't know he had a name. Yes, he has a name. That one that one was just it was like Hedwig, but we only knew him for like ten minutes. <laughs> it was quite sad. So what are we talking about this month, Lavender? So this month we are gonna be talking about HBO's production of Autism the Musical. Yeah, so this was a 2007 documentary film that followed the lives of five children on the spectrum for six months as they and their families worked together to write and perform a musical through a project called The Miracle Project. We decided to review this because HBO is releasing a follow-up called Autism the Sequel, and so we're going to be covering that one next month. Yep. And after watching, I am very excited for this follow-up. I know. I know. That was the, that's exactly what I thought when I got to the end of it, too. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to follow up on these kids, personally. The thing that was so great about this particular documentary is the fact that it followed kids all over the spectrum. It wasn't just one or two that were closely related. This is, you had kids that were very severe and you had kids that were almost basically normal. Mm -hmm. And several in between, which is something you don't see a lot. Yeah, I think they, I really think they did great with trying to capture a wide range of the spectrum. I, I thought they did just great with it. But it was also more about the parents, and the parents were all over the place as well. You had some that were very understanding and very good with all the kids, and then you had others that were complaining about vaccines the entire time. No. <laughs> well, there was one. That, that's a little dramatic. <laughs> it was... <sighs> We'll touch on we'll touch on it more in a little bit, but it was definitely more about the parents than I would have liked. Yeah, I, I kind of like the fact that it was more about the parents. I think I think that it was it was really good. I'm not critiquing it on this matter at all. I think they did great using the kids and the parents. All you know that it was just a very well rounded documentary, and it was also very much just like a fly on the wall style documentary where they just kind of took the comments as they were, they did not have any kind of experts or anything trying to correct anything, they just allowed them to say what they were going to say and left it at that. But our five kids we had Lexi, who was 14, she was fairly normal except for the fact that she had some severe echolalia, yeah echolalia and she would sing that's something that i noticed that when they had a script they could just rattle off the words like it was no big deal mm -hmm. we also had adam adam was kind of an interesting case he was one of the younger ones and i'd say a little more severe in some respects and a little more high functioning in other respects mm -hmm. he did do a lot of running around and not wanting to focus but as the documentary went on he became a little more focused while they were at their practice sessions mm -hmm. then we have neil who was the director who was putting on this whole project it was her son who um was one of the more severe cases in the show and it was kind of odd to me that she would be the one putting this on because he was the one that was I kind of felt like one of the least likely to be able to participate in the project very well and then Henry was introduced as having Asperger's syndrome and he liked dinosaurs yes he did and also he liked dinosaurs and he knew all uh, about lots them. of lots of dinosaurs <laughs> he liked to impersonate dinosaurs he likes to tell you all the facts all of the facts about dinosaurs 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 <laughs> and then we come to Wyatt. Wyatt was probably the most aware out of all of them. He was, I, I really enjoyed the conversation he had with his mother about whether or not he wanted to switch classes because he was very aware that he was in a special ed class and that it was way below him. But he was also very aware that he didn't quite fit in with the regular class either. And for that reason, Wyatt was the most heartbreaking character for me because I mean that 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 was kind of a constant throughout the whole documentary was with Wyatt at least I mean that and he was very obsessed he with was bullies. very obsessed with bullies I don't think aware is the word for that I think he was just very obsessed and I think maybe some anxiety was definitely triggering all it of was, that it was almost to the same level that Henry liked dinosaurs yeah 
I, I loved all of these kids. I mean, I all of them. <laughs> I wanted to hug them all. But Wyatt definitely broke my heart just with how aware he was. But it also annoyed me when they, they went to a specialist to try to get him placed in a school. And the guy said his test scores weren't high enough. Test scores are not a good indicator, especially when dealing with autism, as to whether or not they will function well in a different style class. Mm Mm-hmm. I know I, especially with math, I always had horrible test scores and I had a hard time passing the test to move up to algebra. But as soon as I was able to get into those more difficult math classes, I was doing a lot better and it just clicked with me a lot better. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised you say that because I know that you're quite good at math. um, If I have a calculator, I'm quite good at math. Oh, you can tell I'm old. If I have a a piece of paper, at least, where I can write it out, I'm okay at math. I'm very, very slow to do it that way, but I can. Moving into some of my notes I took, the first thing I noticed was that it was shot in HD, but it was mastered in full frame, which this was 2007, so that makes sense. But like, it really caught me off guard when it went into the title sequence and it was square. And I'm like, why? Why did they do that? <laughs> it was just the title <laughs> See, that's sequence. That's something I did not notice. It was just for a minute at the beginning of the movie that it stopped being widescreen. <laughs> And then very early on, there was a statement about theater people not having issues with things out of the ordinary. And that's when I'm like, I'm going to like this documentary. (laughs) My first thought after, you know, the first few few minutes and then we're first introduced to Kochi and her son Neil. And she's she says that, you know, theater people don't have issues with things out of the ordinary. The only thing I kept thinking as a as a special needs mom is like, okay, so she did music therapy with her kid. That's what this is. This is music therapy. Mm-hmm. I just found it funny. <laughs> Henry's mom does not care about the dinosaurs. This made me sad at first, but then he kept talking about the dinosaurs. <laughs> I was about to say, she probably, she probably knows all the things about the dinosaurs now at this point, too, just because Henry knows so much about the dinosaurs and wants to share it with his mom. <laughs> I'm sure she's probably heard all of those things like a thousand times. Now, Adam's whole family upset me. At first, we, we met his one-on-one, who Adam was kind of a weird case. It was like they had him in like regular classes, but he had a one-on-one teacher with him the whole time. But she, she said her job was to make it so that he could fit in and be normal. And it just irritated me in the way that she would just yell at him and try to force him to be normal and was just irritated with him not being. You're talking about his one-on-one? Yeah. But then his mother was like the same way. And then his dad was just like a horrible person. Because he cheated shortly after they found out he was when he was diagnosed. And she blamed the whole situation and basically forgave him. And he's like, no, nah, that's not the reason I did it. Yeah, that moment for me was kind of intense. <laughs> Like they could have done without that whole clip, honestly. Yeah, but it, it gives you it gives you an idea of what you're dealing with, though. <laughs> there was some stuff that's just like that was not necessary for us to know, but at the same time, it showed us that his whole family is just horrible. I disagree on some levels. I think horrible is kind of strong. I can tell that his parents love him, especially his mom. I can tell that his mom loves him very much and is very vocal for what she thinks is right for him. The first thing I noticed though when we got to Adam's little segment and we were introduced to his one-on-one, she said that she had been with Adam since he was three, which granted Adam is one of the younger characters we're following, but still... That's insane. That's uh, down here in the school system that we're in. That's almost an unheard of. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe they should try a new one on one just to see how he reacts because they don't want him to get dependent on this one person in the school system. You know what I mean? Yes. She would. It was. I really don't what to think of her and like she just gets done explaining that she is trying to make sure that he that he is able to function in a normal way and then turns around and oh he has a crush on this girl so we let them play together for exactly two minutes and it's like that's not realistic 10 minutes it was 10 minutes okay but the fact that it's like timed is not something that you'll that's not how the real world works i just did not like her specifically 
<laughs> I just, I recognize, I guess, that like everybody kind of takes autism a little differently. I mean, I'm not, and this is not a dig at you. I'm just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like everybody takes it differently. And I guess the reason that I'm so kind of neutral right now on everybody is because I see myself a little bit in all of these parents that we've met right. at some point on this parenting journey that I've been on. Maybe not right now in this present, but definitely at some point I've been where those parents have been. And it was just, I told you, I told you uh, last night, like this, this movie was kind of an emotional roller coaster for me all over the place. I had to take three breaks. That's <laughs> yeah, I, I had to take several breaks. I it's it was hard to sit through in one sitting, but not necessarily not like in a bad way. It was just very right, which is different. It was just all very intense, but I I still loved it. Like I still ended up loving it, and I'm still so excited for the follow up. And I still highly recommend it to all of our listeners too. But just you know, be be ready for an emotional roller coaster, and breaks are okay. <laughs> I thought it was kind of odd that, so they decided to create this whole play in a six month period, but it was the first two months was basically them just getting used to each other and doing simple activities and stuff. Yeah. And I just thought it was kind of odd that they planned for two months before they actually started writing, which mm -mm. the writing process was interesting. I was a little confused as to what they were going to do, and it was just very much letting them act out and improvise, and then they turn that into a series of sketches with a loose plot, maybe? Mm -hmm. With with some random songs thrown in that they also help come up with? I thought it was... I thought that the way that Kochi approached this whole thing was great. Yeah. I thought it was great that she knew that, you know what, we're gonna have two months just to figure out what each kid likes, what they don't like, what we can do, just get to know everybody. I thought that was, like, just genius, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I loved how she she wasn't like, okay, we're gonna do The Wizard of Oz as a play. No, she included the kids in every step, you know? She saw what the kids were talking about and what was on their minds and what, they, what she thought that they would do best on stage and be most comfortable with, and that's how she built the entire play. Mm -hmm. I loved it. We need more coaches in the world, I think. <laughs> Now, I was kind of with Henry most of the time. If you noticed, he seemed kind of bored and also did not sing along with any of the songs. But I, I, I feel like I would have kind of been in that same boat of, I wanted to do a real play and here we are playing games and not doing much. Was that Henry or was that Wyatt? Maybe it was a little of both. I noticed Henry doing it. Well, Henry wasn't singing. No, but he prattled off about his line about the dinosaurs. Yes. Quite well. I loved it. I loved Adam and his little cello. Like for me, and I know this is so small and minute, but for me, that was one of the best parts ever. Adam and his cello. About the cello, though, you could tell that they did not get to participate in very many group activities because during rehearsals, Coach E skipped the cello, but had no intention of actually not letting him do it. It's just because when you do that type of show with a bunch of kids and one kid has a special talent that they've been practicing on their own, you don't rehearse it every time. And that's very normal, but his mother did not see it that way. Yeah, I think there was a moment where she misinterpreted and she thought that his bit was going to be cut from the actual play. And I loved how Coach E even pushed back a little with the mom and was just like, you know what, your son is fine. Mm -hmm. Like, really, he's he's fine. <laughs> You're kind of the only one making a fuss about this situation. <laughs> I just, sometimes, sometimes those parents have to be put in check. Mm -hmm. We really do. Sometimes. We can definitely be too overprotective and not let our kids just be. <laughs> so I loved that she pushed back a little on that. Yeah. Now, one thing that Kochi kept doing that I absolutely hated and wanted her to stop doing was forcing these kids to look her in the eyes and, like, grabbing their chins and, like, saying, look me in the eyes. And, like, Henry had a very hard time looking her in the eye even as he was talking and knew what she was doing and was just really struggling with it. And I don't like looking people in the eyes when I'm talking because I can't think. I knew when I was watching throughout this whole thing, every time she said that, I knew that you would hate that i knew that it was gonna come up in today's podcast it was like oh queerness is he's gonna hate that i think that that specific criteria 
or milestone of looking people in the eyes where you're, I think that's so overrated, especially if that person is engaging with you. Yeah, I, I anyways don't understand it at all. I mean, especially okay because this took place in the early 2000s, like 07, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. That was definitely more heavily stressed back then. I mean, like like we were talking about, Abby Abby Cadabby was born 2010, mm-hmm. so shortly after this. But in the beginning, that was like a huge criteria or milestone. And in the beginning, we were really worried about it. But now as I've, you know, gone on, she's about to be 10. I don't really, I don't really care about it as much at all. Like I said, especially she's engaging me in other ways. Like I have no diagnosis at all so far. And like I don't like to look people in the eyes when I'm talking to them because for the exact reason you said, it's harder for me to concentrate on what I'm trying to tell you. Right. And even listening, I have a hard time. I'll sometimes look at their mouth because it helps match the words with what they're saying. But most of the time, I'm not looking at anything in particular because I'm just trying to process the words. Yeah. And I, I do that same thing. That's why, that's why I can't listen to audiobooks. I don't see how you can do it. It's, it's very focused. It's, it's easier to do when driving and it keeps me from my mind wandering while driving, which is bad. Well, that I can understand. While driving, that makes perfect sense in my head, actually. But any other time, I couldn't do it. No. No. It's also very hard to listen to an audiobook and read at the same time. Oh, yeah, no, I would why, why would you do that? To get it two times at the same time for better (laughs) it it don't work no that made my brain hurt just i tend to wander more because i read it faster than they say it and then i think about something else and then i'm like oh i wasn't paying attention (laughs) (laughs) yeah that thought would never literally never even cross my mind to try to do it no no overall i'm glad you uh made me watch this (laughs) queerness the beginning of it i was not i don't enjoy watching this type of stuff generally it makes me uncomfortable overall i quite enjoyed this one i'm so glad you said that because watching stuff like this kind of makes me uncomfortable too and it definitely makes me more emotional than i am just naturally as a person i'm not a super emotional person but watching stuff like this always just one way or the other you know whole roller coaster in between it always gets me although i do i think i do want to start watching the is it the good doctor yeah i don't i don't know about that one i've heard good things about it i've heard bad things about it i don't know i've watched a few clips online and it looks like something i want to try at least and it's got charlie from charlie and the chocolate factory Uh uh-huh did you not know that i mean you talk about from the the newer Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, Charlie, not Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the uh-huh. Chocolate Factory with Johnny Depp. Uh huh. I, I mean, I've not actually even seen that one. Don't waste your time. <laughs> it wasn't that great. He was all, he was in a lot of other stuff too when he was younger. Now I can't remember the name of it. It was like it was the guitar movie <laughs> with Robin Williams. The guitar movie? Ah, that's a bad way of putting it. Um, this kid played guitar. Charlie. <laughs> played guitar. I'm just gonna look him up, dang it. I hope With you don't know. Robin put this in. Williams? I have yeah. no idea what you're Robin talking Williams, about. Robin huh. Williams and I think his name is Jonathan. Anyway, Williams. we're gonna take a little break. He, um here is your trivia question. What is the name of Ron's uncle who saw the Grimm and died twenty four hours later? Be right back. August Rush. Oh. I have no idea what that's about. I just knew Robin Williams was in it. And we are back. So, Lavender, what was Ron's uncle's name? It was Uncle Bill. Close. I think it, I think Bill is actually named after him. It is Uncle Billius. Ah. (laughs) In Wizarding World news, we have quite a bit of stuff going on. In our not news segment, I've got, there's some stuff that's been trending. edsmart.org, which is a college ranking site, is going to pay five people a thousand dollars to watch all 10 Harry Potter movies and live tweet them. That's been all over the place. Like people think that they actually have a chance to do that. If only. <laughs> On TikTok, there was a couple who trended doing a series of videos of a hundred years of Hogwarts fashion, which was just interesting. JK Rowling retweeted it. Hmm. Daniel Radcliffe has been waiting out the quarantine by putting together a 3,000 piece Jurassic Park Lego set. Except he said he's not very good at following instructions, so he was mostly just sorting pieces and handing them to his girlfriend who was putting it together. And took them only three (laughs) days. Well then, his girlfriend is 
great at puzzles then. <laughs> also, with Daniel Radcliffe and Alan Cumming doing that play shortly before the quarantine, the two of them had made a video where they were playing a game of Samuel Beckett or Eeyore, in which they had to guess if a quote was written by Samuel Beckett or if it was Eeyore. <laughs> they were almost all Eeyore, and they were almost all insanely deep. Eeyore is deep. The Toronto production of Cursed Child has been pushed back till next year, so they are not opening this fall like originally planned. Mm -mm. Now, in our new news, Ezra Miller, who plays Credence Fairbone and Aurelius Dumbledore, he did stupid stuff. Yeah, unfortunately. He was in Reykjavik to prepare for Fantastic Beasts 3 when it was postponed and went to a bar and I guess there was some pushy fans that were bothering him and it got to the point that he began to choke her and violently push her to the ground. Um, Someone started filming this. It was about 15 seconds before it started getting kind of violent and the video stopped. At that point, the bar employees jumped in, stopped him, kicked him out, but no charges were filed, police were not called, there's no investigation. As far as I know, Warner Brothers has not released any kind of statement yet. Um, it's not just Fantastic Beasts he's in, he also is playing The Flash in one of their franchises, and so, yeah, two of the stars are now, like, bad people fun. <laughs> J.K. Rowling has bought her childhood home church cottage. Apparently she bought it back in 2011 for 400,000 pounds using her husband's real estate company so it was kind of quiet and people didn't know about it but they were just approved for a permit to renovate. So that's why it's kind of popped up and people have noticed it now. This is the house that had the cupboard under the stairs and is well known for having Joanne Rowling slept here circa 1982 written on a bedroom window. <laughs> I don't know why, but that piece of news makes me happy. <laughs> Tom Felton is starring in a new movie that just released called Breaking for Whales which I had not heard of until I seen a trailer for it and realized that it already released. It is about a brother and a sister who do not get along well and have not seen each other in a long time and have to get together to go on a road trip to bury their mother's ashes in a whale. It's a very weird concept, very R-rated looking movie. I'm not sure about this one. Oh, I'll check it out. A painter in Missouri, Craig Thomas, has painted a mural entitled Expecto Coronis. It is a painting of Harry Potter fighting a coronavirus, and it's on display in the Arts Council of Southeast Missouri. <laughs> Rupert Grint and his longtime girlfriend, possibly secret wife, Georgia Groom, are expecting a baby. Congratulations. The Harry Potter buses that are normally used for doing tours from King's Cross Station to the Harry Potter Studio Tour are now being used as free transport for the National Health System and is moving between three hospitals. That's cool. It's very nice. There has been a Minecraft mod released by the Flu Network called Witchcraft and Wizardry. This has been something that's been ongoing for a long time several years um they've released the map actually several years ago but they have continued to modify it and add rpg elements so this is a massive faithful recreation of hogwarts hogsmeade london diagon alley ministry of magic it's a fully functioning rpg with quests and spells and lessons and it's free as long as you own Minecraft, so. That's exciting for all of our Minecrafters. Do those people still exist? I assume so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A new species of green pit viper has been discovered in India, and they named it Trimericeris Salazar. Salazar. I don't know what that first word is, but that second word is Salazar. And J.K. Rowling is back on Twitter. <laughs> uh, this is, this yeah, has been is. mostly good. Not not crazy bad stuff. Mostly just responding to fans and stuff. She has posted a couple things that have drawn some attention. 
on April 3rd, she tweeted that if you're a life coach who is implying that people are losers because they aren't learning a new skill or building a brand while in lockdown, maybe stop. People have challenges you know nothing about. Sometimes getting through something is more than enough. Okay. <laughs> She's snapping on people. <laughs> she snaps on people in weird ways sometimes. Although I fully agree with her sentiment here. Yeah. Let me just quarantine, man. Just let me do what I want on lockdown, please. Thank you. Then on April 6th, she tweeted that she had all the symptoms of COVID-19 for the last two weeks, but was never tested for it. She found a video where a doctor demonstrated a breathing technique. She did it and is now fully recovered. Um, this is very troubling. <laughs> To clarify, yes, this breathing technique will help clear phlegm from the lungs. It will not cure a virus. It can help spread it. Yeah. I, I'm not questioning that it made her feel better, but also the COVID-19 symptom is a dry cough. So whether or not this would actually help with this particular virus is unknown. Sounds like she probably just had allergies. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it, it's just the fact that she is spreading partially pseudoscience and then people are just like, oh, look, she found the magic cure. No, no, she didn't. No, that's if <laughs> people don't do that. And especially when you have doctors that are like starting it and then it snowballs like this. It's just very frustrating. <laughs> yes, it's very troublesome. Don't get your medical advice from Twitter. Anybody, please. Just an actual doctor. And then the next day, she tweeted about how during dress rehearsals for Cursed Child, she remembers seeing Snape making his first appearance with his back to the audience. And she started tearing up and for a split second, believed that when he turned around, it would be Alan Rickman. And it was all sad. And then Alan's brother, Michael, responded. It's just a nice little, he says, I had spoke to Sir Ian, but never got a chance to thank you for speaking at his funeral. To everyone in the wider world, he was a star to us. He was more. He was our brother. Our mom would have been so proud of the respect he was held in. Aww, my emotions. So she said stupid stuff about viruses and then turned around and made us cry. As only J.K. Rowling could. In autism news this month, I don't have a lot. I actually did not come across... There's not a lot going on in the world at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel is hosting a limited run celebrity who wants to be a millionaire with no audience, which is super weird. It's all super weird, but yes. It must have been like recorded last month before everyone went completely bit locked mm -hmm. down. So like they're like on the set and everything but there's no audience but it sounds like there's an audience it's just weird that is weird anyway <laughs> anyway eric stone street from modern family was the first participant and he was playing for his sister's charity building hope for autism based in kansas missouri and he got past question 10 banking thirty two thousand dollars and eventually walked away at question 13 with a total of a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that's lovely mm -hmm. yeah and also i love modern family and every every person in that cast so all the more merrier that about does it for today's meeting. Don't forget to join us on the 15th. Yes, the 15th we will be reading the last half of Prisoner of Azkaban, chapters 12 through 22, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then next month on the 1st, we will be covering Autism the Sequel. So be sure to check those out. And in the meantime, you can reach us at spewcast at gmail.com. Send us a howler or owl mail. You can also, you can call us and leave us a howler at 407-706-SPEW. That's 407-706-7739. Or there's a link in the description. Our website is spewpod.uk. And we are on Twitter at Spectrum People. Our Facebook is SpewCast. Instagram is at SpewPod. And we're now on TikTok at SpewCast. And as always, we'd like to thank Joan Burr for our theme music. Until next time, I'm Queerness. And I'm Lavender. And as Luna Lovegood said, don't worry, you're just as sane as I am. Bye. Bye. Bye.